officially the coolest thing I've ever made. Look at that. Oh. Almost a year ago, I met a young lady named Rachel from SolidWorks. She's a subscriber to the channel, and we're sitting at a table discussing my YouTube channel. It turns out she really loves the fact that I make educational videos and that everything I design is made in SolidWorks. At one point in the conversation, she says, what do you need to make more content like this? Like, What would help you take your channel to the next level? It wasn't very hard to answer this question because this is something I've been thinking about for a long time. Basically, Basically, I said, I want to design and build a custom CNC machine. I need to be able to uh, use a spindle. I want to be able to plasma cut out steel. I'd love to have a rotary axis on it. And this is something that you don't just buy off the shelf. This is something that has to be made. Several months go by and suddenly I get a call from Rachel who says, hey, remember that machine you want to make? We want you to design and build a CNC machine, plasma and all, and SolidWorks is going to sponsor it. You still in? What? Wait, yes, I'm still in, but wow, I have got a lot to figure out. First, I've never actually programmed a part before for a CNC machine. I've never used a CAM package before. I don't know anything about G-Code. I don't know anything about Mach 4. And if you're in that boat, then you're gonna experience it with me, what it's like to actually figure out this stuff as you go. Now, Full disclosure, I have designed CNC machines before. and In fact, this is a CNC welding machine that I designed, but I didn't have anything to do with the electrical side or the programming side. I just put together the mechanical components to get a functional machine. The scale of this project is huge, so we're gonna start by just talking about the frame and the overall design. Every CNC machine has the same basic anatomy. There is a rectangular box with linear rails of some sort, which allow a head to move above the part underneath. Now, there are lots of videos already on things like ball screw versus uh, gear teeth, and so I'm not gonna get into that too much here, although for the size table that I have, gears were definitely the way to go. One of the things that I wanna cover, though, is this extruded aluminum that the table is made out of. This stuff is ridiculously expensive to buy new. In fact, my original design was of sheet metal because I priced it out and having all the parts custom made and bent locally was still cheaper with sheet metal than it is with this extruded aluminum. Now, no doubt, this stuff is easy to assemble with minimum tools and is very straight usually. And so there are some pros to using this stuff, but it comes with a price tag. One of my requirements was that I can take a full four foot by eight foot sheet of either plywood or steel, place it on a table and cut out the various patterns that I want to be able to cut out. That means I need a table that's at least four and a half feet by eight and a half feet. But I also want a rotary axis at the end. This guy's going to have a fourth axis, which is under construction. And that will allow me to plasma cut pipe. So I need an additional six inches or so at the end of the table. While I was designing my frame, expecting to make it out of sheet metal, I was also investigating used industrial equipment. I know that that's gonna be the best way to get the most power for my dollar. And so I invested quite a bit of time in searching online auctions, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, like you name it, I was checking it every single day. And it took about three months before I found this guy horribly destroyed and beat up sitting in a warehouse. Now, I went to look at the thing, and let me tell you, it was in horrific shape. Lots of wires were cut, the whole frame was out of square, all types of fasteners were missing, and the entire electrical system was shot. None of it was working, all of it was gonna need to be replaced. So all of the motors worked, but the encoders and everything in the electrical panel was toast. If you're gonna buy equipment like this, you need to be prepared to do some repairs. They were, I spent a lot of time loosening fasteners, getting everything square, buying replacement parts, and getting the table just back to where everything was level and square. Needless to say, I worked out a deal with the guy and I purchased this frame with that spindle and these servo motors. 
And that was the foundation from which I was going to design my plasma, fourth axis, and my uh, spindle action. As you already know, many parts of CNC design have already been pretty well developed. But the one solution I haven't seen done very well is how do you combine both plasma and spindle and use the full length of the table, easily being able to switch back and forth. And the solution I came up with, as you can see here, is a two-part design. I decided to put the water tray down below because I don't mind if wood chips get down into the water tray, but obviously I don't want MDF or something flammable below the plasma cutter. So when using the plasma, I can remove this upper tray, which has been divided into three sections. This section is only a half section because underneath there's going to be this rotary axis which would be accessible to both the spindle as well as the plasma. Also, you can see in the water tray there's a hole there which allows me to drain them. That hole is big enough to use a regular shower drain and you can see in the picture what that looks like. Essentially what I ended up doing was installing these rectangular extruded aluminum frames. These guys will have tapped holes in them which I haven't quite done yet and this MDF board will screw down into the rectangular frame. That'll give me a relatively lightweight rectangular panel that I can pick up by myself and remove it. It'll still be very stiff and the water trays have these adjustment screws in the corners. In fact, I'll show you that. So each corner has this hole which allows me to put an adjustment screw as well as a nut once I adjust and level the table on top, then all of those will be tightened down and they'll stay in place. Then I can remove the panels whenever I want to do plasma for the full length of the table, or I can just remove one panel if I just need to plasma in one area, or I can remove all three. And it's very easy to switch back and forth. Now, I considered welding these frames myself, but I wanted to be sure that this guy was really flat, and I don't trust my welding that much yet. So I decided to have this made by a local fabrication shop. As you can see here, the fourth axis is just kind of free floating in the middle air right now. And that's because I ended up buying a different uh, chuck at the last minute. And so this bolt hole pattern and everything is different, which means I need to redesign that mount. But essentially it's gonna fit right into this tray here. It'll bolt onto this tray and that part will be stationary both the spindle as well as the plasma will be able to access this rotary axis. And there's still plenty of room left over here for a full four foot by eight foot sheet of either steel or uh, wood. All right, that's enough of the model. Let's go downstairs and make something. Plasma cutting the pipe was pretty awesome, so let's make another logo pipe. As I prepare to fire up this machine for what I think is by far the coolest function, on this machine, the rotary plasma combination, I gotta take a minute to thank my sponsor, SolidWorks. Guys, they stepped up in a huge way. This is the first sponsored video I've ever done, and it's with a program that I absolutely love to use. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've been using SolidWorks pretty much since the beginning. And even when I left my job where I had access to SolidWorks, I started maintaining my own license because I love using the program that much. So that's the real deal. I need you to click on that link and let SolidWorks know not only that you want them to support more content like this, but that you want to check it out and see why, I, why Jeremy loves it so much. Anyway, click on the link. You can try the program yourself right now, live online. You don't even have to install it unless you want to, and they'll help you with that as well. All of that stuff is on that website. There's even instructions for how to make sketches, how to do the basic things to start modeling in SolidWorks. Well, I am an amateur, so I just a few parameters and uh, we just might have it. <laughs> well, 
We got a whole lot more stuff left to show. I've got to show you the whole build process. I need to show you the electrical build out for the cabinet. Uh, I set up three phase power for this project. I bought all types of industrial parts used and I'm going to teach you guys how to do that kind of stuff and adjust it according to your budget. Anyway, I'm so pumped about this project. I'll be back in a week. Hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss that notification and you can be here with me to continue the series. Anyway, thanks for watching.